welcome to this week's episode. Today is a very special and exciting episode because we are finally talking about our specifications for Ruby Rose 2. Now you guys have been asking us, what are you putting on your boat for months? And I'm sorry that we've been coy, it's just because we have been trying to finalize all the details before letting you know what they were. So we are going to go through everything, um, every single spec that we are putting on Ruby Rose 2 we are going to talk about today with the caveat that there may be one or two minor changes. Tweaks, let's call them tweaks, shall we? Yes, um, but we, we're 99% of the way there, yeah. so we're good. Let's bear in mind when we are talking about our specifications that we are really looking for a boat that is going to be a liveaboard cruiser, so something that is our home, but also a really good passage maker, so a boat that we can happily and safely and comfortably cross oceans with. So there's been a bit of a, you know, we've had to try and find a balance between keeping the boat like really performance orientated because that is what she's designed for and we want that performance, but also kind of having those, you know, amenities on board that we really we know will make our lives easier because you know she's our home and we live on board so there's been a few add-ons that you know perhaps are a little bit heavy not really ideal in terms of weight saving but we think that they'll make our lives a lot easier and happier so we've chucked them in yeah. but anyway let's get let's crack on with it let's crack on so if you the Seawind 1370 options page, there are hundreds of different options and you can tick different bits of them. And we went through exactly the same process when we built Ruby Rose. They have a myriad of different options. As Therese has said, this boat is meant to be our home. So we have to give a nod to home comforts, but we want a dedicated passage maker that's fast. So there are, there is a little bit of, an, of a Venn diagram overlap there um, and some things that make us our home comfortable don't save us weight. So I think we've done what we can to try and make the best of both worlds. Now bear in mind that this configuration is not going to be for everyone. If you have a 1370 on order or if you are specifying a Catarran to say for instance spend your season in the Bahamas and then sail back to Florida and that's what you propose to do for you know the foreseeable future, this probably won't suit you. Similarly, if you have a boat that is going to go into charter, this again won't suit you. So this comes from the point of people that have spent, we've now lived on a boat for seven years. We've, you know, sailed full time for five years and we have done a shed ton of research into weight saving and what is required on a catamaran. So coming from those points, this is exactly, you know, where we're aiming for to build a boat that's a comfortable liveaboard full-time liverboard but yet fast and safe so we will start with different topics to talk you through the whys the wherefores and the rationales of that and if you have anything to add to this whole discussion just put the comment down below yeah definitely. and we'll take it from there yeah i i anticipate there'll be a lot of questions and maybe a lot of kind of people wondering why we're choosing one thing over another um and putting forward like an alternative kind of argument for something else so definitely um make those comments down below and we'll try and answer them if we can and um yeah we'll keep the conversation going in the comments okay number one First topic, we're going to discuss electronics. Now that is going to be the whole way this the boat is wired up, how we're going to create electricity, how we're going to save electricity, how we're going to manage, you know, our, our power consumption, things like our batteries. So let's start with kind of like the guts of it. We are having a full set of lithium batteries. So we're going for the master volt lithium batteries. We've said this from the outset that the lithium batteries are absolutely a necessitous for us. We are not having a gen set. We do not want the weight of a gen set. And I've said this a hundred times before, over the last two or three years, Teresa and I lived in the Caribbean for two years. And honestly, all our crews of friends that had gen sets were forever repairing them. With Mastervolt's new systems, you don't actually need a gen set to provide the power output that you need, so long as you are careful with it. So to power the boat one option that seawind have added is to increase your solar bank to 1930 watts so yes so we're having that we are also having the large lithium battery bank now the power output of the solar panels is matched to the battery bank there's no point in having a massive array and a a uh, battery bank that is too small. Similarly, there's no point in having a massive battery bank that you know can't be charged up by the by the solar panels. 
add to this again and then we knew this from the outset the 200 amp alternators that are going to be fitted to both engines and that is going to it will be absolutely everything we need to power our boat option one is going to be the extra solar panels option two is going to be the big master vault lithium battery bank coupled with the uh the 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 200 amp alternators so we are going to go with the c-zone system for those of you who don't know c-zone is a digital switching system it's all done on a touch screen and it does give you it gives you fingertip control over just about every facet of the boat we have been pretty fortunate in that we have now sailed two uh seawind 1260s over the last couple of months one had c-zone and one this one doesn't have c-zone it has the standard switching so this boat has agm batteries and the standard battery monitoring system and our previous 1260 had the c-zone system and lithium and lithium now from the point of view of the previous boat the amount of charge we could get into those batteries just under like engines you know just doing 1500 revs was insane we could get 200 amps into the battery so we've actually got real-time experience for that this uh boat doesn't quite it, it with the agms you can't charge the agms as fast and it doesn't have those big alternators on so from the point of view of being able to recharge we now know that this this system isn't quite what we want i mean we love this boat but the lithium system with the c-zone absolutely necessitous the other thing is that having used the c-zone system and this system the battery monitoring system on this boat it, it doesn't give me enough information it doesn't give me the current draw of every single item that i'm using now you did on ruby rose we could we could do that just by seeing you know by turning something on or a light off on or off and it would show the exact current draw for the simplicity of a season system where i know that if i turn a fridge on it shows me exactly what it's drawing that's what i want um, energy management for us has been a huge thing and going forward we are building a boat that has far more complex systems so we have put a lot of work in with shane and jay at seawind to make sure that this boat we have got the we've a really good balanced energy requirement so that's that's exactly you know where where the the core of this boat's power going to come from so lithium master vault um, alternators controlled by season and that's going to enable us to run ac systems such as the washing machine so yes we are having the washer dryer because that is you know we, we've been so long without a washer dryer it is something as liverboards we have kind of like almost prayed for i would say so you know laptops hair dryers microwaves all those things and in addition to that we are having two electric winches and again those they have a huge current draw and again we'll talk about this a little bit as we talk about the sailing characteristics of ruby rose 2 but again two electric winches you know the big windlass um the washing machine and the new aircon systems that the 1370 is going to have mean that you don't need a gen set to power it up so it will run at anchor and shane um, has done all the calculations and you don't the, the the air conditioning system will run uh, perfectly adequately day in day out just using the battery banks that you have and the solar although saying that after living anchor for a few years in the caribbean we tend to find that you need air conditioning when you're in marinas and very a few other times i think you just have yeah, to get sure. used to it you know if you want to live in a you know in a in a refrigerated box that maybe <laughs> sailing the caribbean isn't for you so that deals basically with our electronics the next part i want to talk to you about is the engines because seawind offer a few different engine configurations for this uh, boat we have opted for the engine upgrade so those are the yanmar 57 horsepower engines and we have opted for the digital throttles. Now, it's a big, it's a pretty big expense. Um, this is our rationale for use going for bigger engines. Firstly, it means that you can get the boat to go pretty fast just using one engine. And you can get to a good cruising speed using just one engine. This means that if you are on, uh, you know, sailing shorthanded and the off watch are on sleep on one side of the boat, you can just run the other engine and it keeps one side of the boat quiet. Secondly, having two engines that are powerful, I think this boat has an engine upgrade on it. And honestly, the ability to kind of just add some more revs 
It, it just it, it means that our passages can be you know even faster than than they would have been on Ruby Rose, and so that's something that we we thought about very carefully. One thing that we have found, and I think this is all part of the learning curve that we've gone through regarding our transition into catamarans, how easy they are to maneuver compared to monohulls. With Ruby Rose, we had. Um, twin rudders and a bow thruster but having these two engines on you know at different sides of the boat mean that this boat will spin on itself and honestly the digital throttlers from our point of view the the manual throttlers on this there's a they're a little bit clunky aren't they these ones are um the ones on the first out to a 60 that we had were less so um, i find these throttles actually really stiff yeah. and difficult um that might just be this particular boat, yep. but certainly the digital throttle. First of all, they just kind of look nice, and second of all, oh, cool. yeah, yeah, and second of all, um, yeah, it is. I think particularly when you're manoeuvring in close quarters, like a marina, you need to be able to have like really like sensitivity around what you're doing because with this, with these throttles, like literally for me at least they're so, so sticky that you, you don't have any kind of fine control yeah. over over the revs it's kind of like you, you're not quite there and then you know you're you're kind of going all out yeah. so to have that you know fine control over over the throttle would be great. So yeah so that was ticked off on the list moving on to the navigation equipment again because the 1370 is going to have a forward facing nav station we are going for a full set of navigation equipment at the helm and at the chart table so twin plotters um, twin instruments twin autopilot controls and um, vhf mics at both um, at both stations again large easily visible displays um ais of course yeah and radar radar and we are going for the forward facing sonar that deals with kind of the electrics um and the electronics um let's talk about comfort on board because again this is going to be our home and i'm going to move through different aspects of this firstly let's just deal with the television upgrades yes we're having a television on board yes we're having the larger television and yes we are having you know uh the, the stereo system in there because again it's our home and i think we'd be pretty happy just you know we do spend a lot of time just chilling out when we're not making videos for you good people so that is something that um that we're definitely going to have yeah television is one of those funny things that like sometimes we use it a lot and then sometimes we never use it, we yeah. never use it. so yeah. it kind of really depends on where we are obviously what kind of you know yeah tv stations we can get yeah absolutely but also sometimes just netflix yeah well that exactly and sometimes we have like loads of cheap internet and uh, sometimes it's book? like you know reading a book yes yeah, it's, it's reading a book. <laughs> a book um so that deals with that now um one thing that you know we have decided on we decided on even before you know we signed with seawind was we wanted corian work surfaces now the galley is going to have corian it's the corian option honestly the galley is going to be so big in this boat that I don't want, I didn't ever want plastic work surfaces. I want them to look beautiful. It's gonna be literally the focal point of this entire boat. There's a breakfast bar, there, you know, this huge kind of like C-shaped galley. It's gonna look absolutely stunning. And yes, I know it weighs a lot. Yes, I know it weighs more than plastic, mm -hmm. but we're having it. It looks so much nicer. Yeah, it does. And so, you know, that, all kind of like with those lovely double sinks it, it's going to look amazing so to me, that was a no-brainer for us we'll take the weight we, we have saved weight, weight elsewhere but because it's such a focal point to the boat that is definitely something yeah, we it's are like the first thing that you, you will see when you walk yes. on board and from outside because it's got this, this exactly. beautiful breakfast part <laughs> it's like right in the middle of everything so there's that we are having the oven upgrade so we're getting a we're having the, the oven with the microwave um built into it the bosch um as well as um, saltwater faucet, the standard freshwater faucet, and um, a drinking water faucet as well. So, you know, just three taps, because again, these are things that we're going to use. Can you uh, remind me, we've changed our mind about a thousand times on this, what part of our cooker, oven, microwave situation is electric and what is Okay, gas? so we're having a gas <laughs> stove top. Yeah, okay. Um, and um, an, electric. an electric microwave oven, oven okay. underneath. That is one of those things that it may change, yeah. but I don't think it will. I think yeah. we're pretty settled we're, on that. I, yeah, I, we really wanted induction, um, and I'm yeah. That's as Nick said. We're still uh, 
kind of we're still, yeah, about but it. But I think, anyway, yeah, the, the, the conversation's gone around in circles about a million times. But I think so. we're settled. I'm pretty happy with it Let's just because we're having we're about. having we're going with the gas barbecue yeah. because honestly, we spent we cook on that gas barbecue every night on this boat and we did on the previous boat, so we're gonna have to have propane on the boat anyway. Yeah. So from our point of view, propane cooks better than induction, and we're having propane as a barbecue anyway. So that's that. And you can always get propane refilled. Doesn't matter where you are in the world, you can get a propane refill. So you know from the smallest Caribbean islands to the South Pacific islands there is always propane somewhere so just looking at our list so we've got this other things that are just minor things yes we're having blinds down downstairs and fly screens um, just so that we can obviously you know keep the light out of the cabin so I don't think we're having any blinds in here uh, no I th we still have to think about that yeah, that's kind of one thing, thing. That like is... the shades I, we'll need some kind of something to create shade in in the saloon but we're still scratching our heads over the detail yep. there so yep. that's something we can think about way down the line yeah so weight saving we talked about the performance aspect of this boat so we are trying to save weight and yes I know that you already know yes but Corian, but yeah, we know <laughs> we know. We, put, we, know we, put <laughs> we said at the up. beginning that there might be a few um, compromises. But a few things. You know, Shane has worked so hard to get this this boat lighter. So rem I think he's they managed to shave two hundred kilos off the weight by moving to a twenty four volt system just but and that changed the the wiring, um, the the weight of wires in there. So they've done that. What we have done is we have opted for the carbon coach roof. That from us it's such a big weight saving and you know I it's, it's one thing that taking the weight off the back of the boat with those engines and the, and the weight comes off up high as well yeah. which makes a difference absolutely so yeah taking that weight off and the engines those 57 horsepower engines they don't weigh that much more it's the same block as the 39 horsepower engines so we're not you're not you're not really putting a lot of weight on there so we are having the yes so we're definitely having the carbon coach roof um we are also having the um carbon fiber bow sprit but you know that's just that is to um you know obviously carry asymmetrics also the on on the 1370 the davit system i think is carbon fiber as well so there is a lot of carbon fiber built into the boat and so we that's our nod to kind of um you know keep trying to keep the weight down Sails. Sails are really important. Obviously, it's a sailing boat, and we have gone with the best sails that we can with it. So we've gone with Doyle's um, GPL Light Skin for the main and the jib. Now, one thing that we noticed on the 1260 is that the self-tacking jib is very, it's small. So you don't get a lot of drive from it. And this boat, Pirate Pete, has a Genoa to obviously deal with that. So it's got the Genoa tracks down the side of the boat. And so you can put a Geno on it if you need to kind of give more drive. Talking to Seawind, what they have done is they have moved the mast aft. So the four triangle is much larger. So the self-tacking jib gives you a lot more sail area than on the 1260. So you don't need that Genoa. So, but we are going with GPR light skin. They are going to look sexy as hell. They are light and strong, and you know we're pretty pretty chuffed to, to have those on the boat. That sh they're also stiff, and it will really be a nod to performance. Off the wind, we are going with the Screecher package. Um, looking at that, just looking at my notes there, we're going with the BX1520 Screecher. So it's not the Stratus Screecher. So in all the kind of range of Doyle's kind of like high end sail materials and sail cloth it's not the very top one it's the one below that which is the best mix of longevity to performance for us and the same with the asymmetric spinnaker we're going for the it's the sk150 and top down furler i do believe so i think that's the way we're going to go with those so our sail wardrobe initially um the big square top main gpl light skin jib um gpl light skin and then the two racing sails what the big screecher and the big um, asymmetric and I talked to I had a really love you know through sheer coincidence I had a good meeting with John John Hearn at um, in Sydney a couple of months ago we just both happened to be stuck there and he was saying that they've designed these sails just really so that downwind you know you making it got a VMG at about 90 degrees the thing will absolutely fly yeah, so excited yeah so that out. yeah so um, watch this space for hopefully some you know some amazing 24-hour passage passage distances yeah i can't wait um 
as for the dinghy, yes, we're going with, um, I think it's the 340 now. There are lots of different discussions about what dinghy you're gonna put on the back of this boat. You do have to try and keep the weight off the back. And so for the dinghy, there are a few options. There's the 340 and the 360. We're going for the 340. But because we live on board, I want a push button start on the outboard. And that is something we are definitely having. So 20 horsepower push button outboard and um, and a 340 dinghy. I don't think we're having the side console. We'd still, that is another one of these things. Shall we have it? Shall we not have it? We would normally have it, but it's the weight that is, um, it's the weight that's gonna, that's causing us um, some head scratching on that. So again, we need to have another couple of discussions with Highfield on that, and we will revert to you once we know. And then the safety aspects of the boat. Um, the boat has obviously been designed with the big, um, access panel for the life raft in the transom so yes we're having an eight man, an eight man life raft we are also having uh, the EPIRB fitted which is the safety pack and one other thing the 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 drogue attachment points people keep saying oh why do you need drogue attachment points put it this way if you ever need a drogue you you really do need a drogue um, it's one of those things where if you're you know if, you, if your boat is going too fast and you need to slow it down and um, you know you need to deploy that drogue you the cleats um, that you attach it to have to be reinforced, otherwise you'll just pull them out of the deck. And for us, it is something that you, you can't not have um, if you want to do it, go and do um, you know, extra lo in long passages where you may get caught out in weather. So there's a lot of safety things that you know we, we've kind of like thrown into the boat. So again, we've designed a passage maker. I'm just gonna look through. Um, the drogue attachment point is a bit like the life raft. You like you buy the best and you pay for it and you hope that that's like wasted money. Absolutely. You're like, I really hope that this money is literally just being like yeah. thrown down Absolutely. The, Absolutely. the sink right now. Yes. Yeah. As well, yeah, well put. Um, other small things, um, we are having the you know uh, the marine vinyl matting in the cockpit, which again mm. it, it saves the weight of the from the whole um, like the teak. Yeah, or the flexi teak. Yeah. And then little things for the cockpit, like deck washes and um, sort of water washes for the anchor. But again, that kind of, you know, it, it put a bit of a dry episode for you, but a lot of people have been asking for this, like what is the final specification? And we thought we'd throw this out for you just to show you exactly um, what we're having on this boat and why we're having it. We really do look forward to bringing you the videos of the build as they come over the next uh, coming months. So I hope you enjoyed that. Sorry it was a little bit dry, it's something very different, but something that you have all been asking for. So that is Ruby Rose 2 and the specification, and we will be back with you um, again with more regular episodes. And then obviously as we move into um, kind of like September, October, the plan is to try and get to Vietnam, obviously restrictions, um, if restrictions are lifted to start videoing the build. So hope you enjoyed that. Feel free to give us a like, uh, leave us a thumbs up, give us a comment and let us know what your thoughts are about our build. And obviously if there are things that you're like, actually, have you considered this? Let us know. Hope you enjoyed that and uh, we'll be back soon. Goodbye. Bye.